Hey everyone, so we're here, finally found Paul Chung at Albion Mountain and we're at his home, it's peaceful environment and how are you doing? Not bad, not good. And tell us about the process with your health condition, moving from a stage of a healthy man to diabetes, to having kidney problems and being on dialysis. Yeah, from about, was about 15 to 18, that, that region, I developed um, diabetes. Mm. I'm living f with it for those time until now. Till gradually, it damaged my eye, I can't see well, mm -hmm. and then it damaged my kidney. Mm -hmm. So I have to be doing dialysis now. Mm -hmm. Two times, I used to do three times a week, now I'm doing, two, doing it two times per week. Mm -hmm. I travel, travel to Kingston. Um, twice a week, mon Mondays and Thursdays, to get it done. Mm -hmm. So what age were you diagnosed with kidney problems? Yeah, at about, um, I started the kidney from about 45, 40, 40, I try to remember, 48. Mm -hmm. I started having a kidney problem. And then I started dialysis when I was about um, 50 mm -hmm. until now. So what were the signs that started to affect you that made you, you know, said this is different, something going on here? Yeah, you start to have, you can't keep doing anything. You start to have vomiting, mm. um, weakness, nauseous. You keep on having some regular sickness, di different, different. And you go to the doctor and the doctor send it to the hospital to check it out. You do your arm, your blood tests and such a light and then you recognize that you're a kidney patient. Mm. You said at age 15 you're diagnosed with diabetes? Yeah, at that at the age. So were you eating a lot of sweets? Like, was it hereditary? Tell us what, what no, went you, through. You don't know, you know, really know what happened, happening, but you just start to act because you know, you live in a normal, normal life. Like you eat ice cream, everything as a youth. I move around, still play like a football. But it happened. And then it lead up to the diabetes. And then it never control. Mm -hmm. So because it never control now it damage start damage organs. Mm. So how how what did you what were you doing that it wasn't controlled? No, probably you know, you know eat right. Mm -hmm. That basically it cause most of the time you take a medication and probably you not eat right or something w went wrong. Mm -hmm. So you never really control. So that's why it damage start damage organ. Mm. So from that age, you're on medication and a different um, amount of pills and that kind of stuff? Yeah, like at that early stage, I take like, um, I don't remember some of the jokes and name, but at that age, we start to take pills until, until one time I went to insulin mm. and then it, was, it improved and then we start to take, um, take back pills. So even though you still take pills towards th those things. Mm -hmm. The um the sugar and the pressure. Wow. And how did you feel when the doctor said you're diagnosed with these kidney problems? Yeah, at, at first you think it was at the end of your life mm. because you get frightened. And you know, wonder how you um manage it until you get to accept say it is what it is. Mm. So you got to find ways and means how to live with it. That is not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And what, did, what was the transition for you with your life, with the um, um, common things that you're doing before moving from that to your lifestyle now? It changed in general because in my case, I couldn't work again mm. because the energy wasn't there. Even though sometimes I have problems standing mm -hmm. because the disease has an effect on your life. Mm -hmm. Because right now, as I said, my eyesight not very well, mm. so it affects you still. So you can't get to go work. Mm -hmm. So because you can't get to free work, mm -hmm. it must be financially. Mm. It is very difficult on you. Because every money you have, you have to be saving it for dialysis. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're short, you don't have money to go. Sometimes you help our friend or so sometimes you need to go because it is tough on the family. Because I'm not working. I'm not working from my from my dialysis. From kidney mashup, no work. I can't afford, I can't be able to work. So, yeah, it, 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 it must have your life financially. And you're the breadwinner? 
Mainly, I'm the only man in this house. But like some family member chip in, I help us. But it is difficult on them as well mm -hmm. to maintain it. So it's stiff. And what's the cost like, or, or, or the process with doing the dialysis? Is it per week, per day? What's the process like, and how much is it? It is in Kingston, very far from here. And you got to um, pay for the visit, you pay 13000 And for traveling, it costs you 6000 So automatically, per visit, it costs you $20,000 per visit. So, you know, really, you know, cheap. And for, for a person not working, it is more difficult. Difficult than the family, difficult than and, and the person, and me, mm -hmm. to maintain it. And you got to do it every week because if you're not doing it, you're going to get poison. Mm. And that's a debt. Mm -hmm. So you keep on after, try hard. It's not easy because every time you get, if you get 50 cents, you have to put it down because you know, so by Monday, you got to want the money. You understand? So you can't do nothing else with money because the financing is very difficult to travel and get the, um, the treatment. And without the treatment, you know what is going to happen. Yeah. And we don't want that happening. No. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about, you know, speaking about no longer being able to work. Let us know your lifestyle, being a man working. You were working at a bakery, is that yeah, correct? I used to work at a bakery, yeah. For um, over 20 years, over 25 years I used to work at a bakery. You understand that at that time you could get for service your bills and do what you can do. But now, you can't do anything unless somebody help you out. Because I don't have an income, a steady income coming in. So just my family and friends who lend a little help in them. And it is difficult on them as well. And they have their bills to pay as well. And when them help you, you have to give grace and thanks. And what's your biggest motivation to live? To live, to see my family and friends like that. And I enjoy football. So those things keep me up strong. And when your friends them come and give you a shout, that makes sense. Because sometimes out of the blue, you have a friend call and say, what happened? That means a lot to me. Family, the same. Simply say hello. And I say, but sometimes, you know, this, this arm thing, since it happened, sometimes some of your friends are kind of forsake or they feel say, they will call them and bother, bother them and beg them things. So, they forsake you, they just don't really want to see you number know, call them. They not shouting either. Family stay as well, so. You understand? They, they cut you off because they say, you're going to be liability to them. So, they feel say you bother them for help. No matter you, they just live close. Since you know this depression or something towards the sickness, some of them don't really, they don't rate you again, they don't heal you again. Because them just things say, you have to beg them and things. So other from money, you know, what are you asking for? Uh, the government to help you? Yeah, yeah, you have a government program. That's um, by the, you have, what's about two hospitals? That's them do this, um, the is free. If I could get another one of, one of those. It would help me a lot because I wouldn't have to pay the fee. All I would have to do is travel to the location. So with that, if I get on that one, the government program, it would help me a lot. You understand? Keep off some of the stress and you can have a look at savings game, do other things. But no, because I'm not on that and I don't have a sponsor like that, you can't do anything else with money. You have just, anything you get the money, you got to save it just for the dollars. So any money you get across your hand, it's dialysis. Dialysis money, because you don't have anything. And sometimes you take sick in the interim, you got to go to doctor. Because sometimes, even this, sometimes it get infected, and you got to change it, and it's not cheap. You got to go to the doctor, change it, and get it out. Because I used to have the fits in the hand, mm -hmm. and it get damaged right now. The marks in a lot of money to get it back. To put back one eye. How much they ask him? They ask him like for 200,000 to get back one started. To get that, what do you call it? Mapping. The graph, I think a graphic name. Mm -hmm. Put a graph in your hand. And you know, some, because you get a, 
that they're spending money doing other things, mm -hmm. you know, easy to find 200,000 just for that. But you, you get to find it because you want it. Because that one is the safer one. The fit is the safer one, according to the medical terms, because this one pick up bacteria easily. And the bacteria can kill you as well. Mm. So it's a rough, rough road. And how many years you've had this one in you? No, not this, that, this same one. Uh -huh. This I changed this lately, but here I have, I have the, the capita in for um, three years, not three years, one time. You change it when it get bad, but you use in capita for at least three years. If it's like, I, if it's like come in by for about, you never reach a year before it mash up back. Mm -hmm. So that's it. So I want to get back the fit, the fit but it costs a lot. Mm -hmm. okay. And let's know more about you, Paul. You know, more about who you are, you know, you know, what's your favorite food, what you like to do, you know, and and how, how you'd like to get back into a certain lifestyle, yes? Yeah, the good thing about I, I like to work. That is my happiest hours, because when I used to work, I used to work long hours. I always like to work. I like football, because mm. I, used, I used to manage a football team. Okay. I'd be a mountain sports club. I used to manage a trial for quite a while. I, I like friends and be around people. I'm a, I would say I'm a people person and I like to help. I like to help people. When I was up and running, I always liked to assist people in whatever need they can, I can. So those that are some things that I really like. I'm a, I would say I'm a happy person. Sometimes they always say, well, I may never see a vexed, but that's it. Just try to put the best out and treat people equal. Yeah, that's my thing. So our producer, Sean Walsh, told you that when he was a little boy, he was in one of the rivers around there. Oh, that, that is when um, we, we were very small, yes. going to the primary school. And we have a rainy day, and we walked by a river, a side of a river that is coming down. And we were walking, I think we were throwing something in the river or something. Mm -hmm. And when you look, you can't find Sean. Mm. When you look at Sean, um, basically passing us in the river, because the river come over an eye. Mm -hmm. And you have to step across. And we go in there, and I gave. I went in there and, and get him out with the help of God because I, could, I couldn't have the strength to do that by myself. So he was drowning? Yeah, he was drowning. And because we get to frighten, probably it's the fright, we're frightened. I see my pass, help me have a jump. And we take him out and God help you out. And it went well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you weren't too much older than him as well, yes? No, we are, we are almost the same age. Wow. Yeah, but it was frightening. And we get frightened and. You have to go get him. You saved a life. In a sense, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you saved a life. You're a community man. You give back to people. You're, you're jolly, joyful. You know, you love football. I mean, you're a remarkable person, you know. Yeah. So Try to be. Yeah, I'm trying to be because right now in, in my district, I don't know who in my district I, and, and I don't talk and have malice. Any one of them is willing to do something for me. Because when I was up, I used to be there for them. So most of them willing to say, hey, do this. Because sometimes even we go in town, we can't really drive again like that. We get somebody to carry me, and they not kill me. Then they just, just get them their lunch and something, and then good. Mm -hmm. Because that, that they pay back from sometimes, the love of me show them when I was strong. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a payback. And tell us, an advice you want to give to people out there to avoid, you know, getting further from their diabetic conditions into the, the kidney stage? Yeah, what, what I would say to everyone who has the sugar, take care of the sugar. Otherwise, diabetes. You got to take care of it because it is not cheap to maintain the kidney problem when you reach there. Even if you have some money, you're frightened if you know that you don't have none because it is very costly. Very, very costly. So take care of your diabetes because if you don't let it, 
damage your organs, you won't have to come to this. It is very, very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Diabetes. It will blind you, cripple you, or mash up your kidney in your heart. So I would tell everyone to try. Maintain their diet. Take your medication. And let people know the experience of being at it's KPH, right? The experience of at KPH. Let's just know the experience at KPH where other people like yourself, what they're going through, how you think the system can be changed for the better for the nation's people. Um, the KPH, you know, they, they want um, more machines there. More machines. You, you don't have enough space to get in, and that's supposed to be one of the island number one hospital. But you, they need more, more um, space to get in some more people because even the, 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 um, the dialysis room, it is not big enough for enough people. How many about? How many estimated? You know, I never really asked, but it's not, not a, a huge amount of people that can attend to per day. Mm -hmm. And you have the list that is very long. Because I went on the list and up to now, I, I, my name cannot call. And I'm on it for over three years. And my name cannot call as yet. Sometimes, I, I went there and I hear people talking like someone in front, then call them after they're dead. Mm -hmm. Because, I said the list go, because all the list go now, you have to either migrate, mm -hmm or you die, so that somebody can come on it. But that's not fair enough. I think they should put in more, that you have more space for more people. May I agree, so probably it, it, it cannot tighten the government to maintain so much, but they need to help. Because you can't have people just dying like that. Because even where I go to, some people come there and what really makes them dead is because they can't afford the money to come back. Some people come like once a week or every other week, then can come one time. And in just them, just a couple of days, just give them a couple of days, they're gone. And that's all because of money. All because they can't afford to come the times that they want to come. So then you just give up because they're not off it. Remember once I hear a man said, him give up because him sell everything. Let him have. Him can you know, have nothing to sell. So he just can't come and just call your day. Because he can't afford it. And them things are kind of hard, they're touching. Hard for no say you try your best and you're you know, good enough. Because the finance. So it want more because when you look at just Kingston alone and probably Spanish town, you have a free clinic. This central area, St. Mary, or no partner St. Mary, no center, no have a free clinic. I think um, like if you put like one hospital in each region, it will help the nation better. More than you have to travel all the way from XYZ to come just Kingston. And you have other hospitals, every parish of hospital. So if in each region, then give like one or two hospitals with X amount of machine, even 10 machines, it will help. You just want some more help for the poor people. And do you think education is important on health? Yeah, the, 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 the government starting what they want more. Them try for, for um, nowadays like, every time I turn on the TV, we see something put into it, it. But they still want more grown tra training towards the people, make they understand more what really, what really happening and what can happen if you don't take care of yourself. And I'm trying to see what they want more. Thank you. Paul, we'd like to know, what's a typical day like for you, the process? Like when you're doing dialysis, like on, on, on a dialysis day, mm. I have to wake up early in the morning to reach Kingston by 9, 9.30 to get on the machine by 10 o'clock. So what time you leave here? I leave here by 5.36. Late to 7 o'clock I leave here. And to catch the arm, because it's a shift, it's a shift thing, you know, so you go, you, I'm like, I'm at 10 o'clock shift at the Diabetes Associate. So when you reach in, it's a first come, first serve, like you reach in the first 10, you have 6 o'clock shift, I'm at the 10 o'clock shift. So you come before the other people, they have eight machines, 
eight machines. So if you come before the other people, in where you fall, if you come first, you go in first. Or if you come last, you go in eight or something like that. You last at, at least three hours in the machine. And um, when you're done the three hours, um, you head back home. Can you eat before or after? Yeah, but the, the, the means you have to be careful about to take like medication wise because it will take all the pressure tablet and sometimes the pressure go down too low. It is very dear. You can pass out. So you have to be careful about your take when you're going in. You eat. You, them tell you to eat because on the machine, if you don't eat, you can affect you. So you try to eat something in the morning before you, you, you go on the machine. Stuff like that. And after treatment, what happens? After treatment, sometimes, depends if the treatment went well, you can come out and walk and you're good. But sometimes, you know, went well, you know, go well. So, you know, you, you eat after sometimes come out from a wheelchair, weak like what, and sometimes you did vomiting, if you call, because sometimes you passed out on the machine, because sometimes your pressure goes down too low, and it, you, you, it might try to revive your back and stuff like that. So it's uh, something you go in, you come, as I said, something you go in, you come out good. Something you come out, you really know nobody. Sometimes you end up at the hospital at by the time you come out. Because the, the, the treatment went well, so they have to send off to the hospital to get some antibiotics or something to pick up have some bacteria. We affect you. So it depends on what happened in the machine. The machine is a dangerous thing to me because sometimes you go in good and happy and you always say you have come out back in a wheelchair. You know, you know, really, to me, you know, really safe like that. Because pass out sometime on the machine. People come there and pass out. Mm -hmm. You can't tell what really happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when it happens, and they must say to you, sometimes they go to wonder, oh, you look like you don't know what happened. But actually, you don't know. Mm -hmm. You don't know what really happened. Blank. Yeah, gone. She just said black. Mm -hmm. That's that, that the point I'm going to like. And it happened to me once at the hospital, mm -hmm. same way, the lady tell me the same thing, she said, I think she's dead. Remember, when I was there, and I remember I pay black. Mm -hmm. Pay black, see, and then the next time I go there, she tell, tell me, she thinks I'm not come out of the place. Passed out like that. Mm. And that most of the pass out, I went, sometimes the pressure got too low. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the mother tells us to try to sleep on the machine because any difference you feel, mm. you call them. Any difference you feel, shout to you. So that's why I didn't really recommend you to try and sleep on the machine. Because mm -hmm. you have to try to help them as well. Mm. And the machine now ball out and say, um, <laughs> it'll get low. It have to, um, you have to tell them so you feel different. Yes. So you have to assist. But anytime you go something, you're tired, you have to sleep. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because you, you sit in one place for over three hours. You know, easily just sit up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell us about this parish that you have you grew up in and you're still here. No, St. Mary is a nice, quiet parish. You know, call it people, family people parish. You have family times. You have enough rivers. I'm a much younger river than I grew up now. Yeah, it's a nice parish here. What's your favorite spot? Like football field. Mm -hmm. Like go to the match. And I where's this field? In in Port Maria. Yeah, the football like, we go watch football regular. Like the district is very good, you know. You have your hang out spot. Sometimes you hang out at the shop by the roadside. On the crossroads? Yeah, we hang out and we have talk football and all kinda of something. Yeah, the, those are hang out spots. Those are the areas that we go to. Because that district wouldn't have nothing big up here. So we have to just make, just entertain yourself. We have some, we have all of good friends up here. Sometimes they're going to shout me. Sometimes we walk up on the road and shout them. So I just said, it, 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 it said, friends and family. Right now, since I'm sick, my biggest angle spot is home. Mm -hmm. When I really do the street again, because, you know, in my family, my mother and my sister live here. So. Them hang out with. And Paul, tell us about your church life. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I grew up in the church, and you know, you come get big, so you start explore other things. 
But now I'm back in because the people in the church, you have all the people that help to um, guide you forward. So I'm a true churchman now. I'm an Adventist. From a, I was a little boy. As I said, try to work up an experiment, come around, get kids. Mm. But now, there's no better place to be. So you're closer to God? Yeah, there's no better place to be because what I've been through, it's only God alone. God alone could pull me through. God gives the doctors the knowledge and understanding to get you forward. So I don't think I will be moving from the church now. It is part of a rock within me now. Yeah, for the blessing that he has done for me. He has kept me. As I said, enough time I went to Dallas and passed out. And only mercy of God has bring you back. So you have to give thanks. And, and you've had three heart attacks so far? Yeah, I have the heart attacks um, during in the hospital. And I'm saying with the heart test and I touched the light. So they, they said it was some minor. So I have to be careful. Be careful with it. So they might like change up some of your arm, um, your diet and such the light. And Paul, who do you want to say what's up to? Yeah, and what's up to the what's up crew and um, Mark for help contribution to this and the people them who willing to assist and who cannot afford to assist, still thanks. Yeah, man, what's up to everybody? Thank you for your time and for sharing with us your story and everybody who is watching, listening, please share, subscribe and we encourage you to go to the GoFundMe link and make your donation, make a change in Paul's life. Help Paul to live longer. It's not every day we're gonna be the same way there must be a change somehow. Our trip to Jamaica was brought to you by our good friends at Rainbow Car Service, Mr. Printer, Prayer Changes Things, 347-455-6226, Phase 2 Event Space. Give them a call, 917-678-8485. Starving Vegan, Congo Eye Natural Fruits and Juice. The corner of Church Avenue and Utica.